Okay, class, I'm going to break this up into several videos. I think that's probably better than real long ones. I don't know if I have the technology to do the real long ones. I'm on section 5.5, page 238. I know the audio is not superb here, but it's the best I can do at the moment. Powers of 10. Okay. We've dealt with powers of 10 before, right? We know that 10 to the second power, what does that mean? It means 10 times 10, so it's 100. Okay, two zeros, power of two, two zeros. You know, 10 to the fifth power would just be a one with five zeros. Okay, all good. We had a couple special cases, like if we had, you know, 10 to the zero power. Anything to a zero power just has a value of one, okay? And 10 to the first power looks a little awkward. We, we don't usually write that one up there, but that's just 10. Okay, we've pr pretty much seen that stuff before, okay? What we haven't seen before is when we start dealing with negative exponents, okay? We are going to see that if I have 10 to the power of negative 1, that's really the same thing as 1 over 10. Okay, It has nothing to do with a negative number over here. A negative exponent does not give you a negative number. A negative exponent is like flipping the fraction over. Okay, Think of it as a fraction. So instead of 10 to the power of 1 being 10, 10 to the power of negative 1 is 1 over 10. Okay, and I'm sure you can guess what 10 to the power of negative 2 is. 1 over 100. Okay, 10 to the power of negative 5. 1 over a 1 with 5 zeros. Okay, 1 over 100,000. Okay, so negative exponents show up that way. Part of our job of simplification is going to be to get rid of those negative exponents. Okay, let me slip the book over here. Maybe that'll be neat. Try to get it straight. There's a few of them right here. Okay, part of our job now is going to be to clear those negative exponents out. There's only one case where it's okay to keep that negative exponent there, and that's something called scientific notation that I'll get to. Okay, but for now, when we see those negative exponents, we want to eliminate them, clear them out, and I'll talk about how to do that. Okay? All right. Cool. So we all know multiplying by powers of 10, no big deal. We're moving a decimal or we're, or we're tacking a zero onto the end. If I take the number 275 and I multiply by 10, what do I get? 2750. Okay? Add a zero to the end. If I've got some decimal in there, like 0 0.18 times some power of 10, in this case I'll make it 100, I'm going to move that decimal two places, right? We've all, we kind of reviewed all this before. 2.4 times 1,000, let's say in this case. Well, I've got to go three decimal shifts. The first decimal shift gets me past the four, so I need to add two more zeros onto there. Okay, I could show these numbers in that exponent notation. I could say 5.72 times 10 to the power of 5. Okay, and we can expand that out. No problem. We can just take that 5.72 and tack 5 decimal shifts onto it because I'm multiplying by 5 powers of 10. So the first two decimal shifts gets me past the 2, so 5, 7, 2, add 3 zeros. Okay? Alright, well what about these, these negative exponents here? What if I have, you know, 43 times 0 0.1? Well, I know if I'm multiplying by 0 0.1, I'm just moving the decimal one place to the left. So it becomes 4.3. Okay, well, another way for me to show the same information would be to say, what if I took 43 times 10 to the negative 1? Instead of calling it 0 0.1, I call it 10 to the negative 1. Same thing. It's like dividing by a power of 10. It's like that. 
43 divided by 10, okay? I'm running out of room here, but we know that equals 4.3, okay? That was example one on page 239, okay? I encourage you to do the checkpoints um, on the side margin, the stop and checks, pardon me, I keep calling them checkpoints from another book. The stop and checks um, on, the, uh, on the margin there, okay? All right. Oh, there's a couple more, my bad. Or one more. Part F here says 2.3, 2.3 times 10 to the negative third power. Okay? Well, what does that mean to us? That means 2.3 divided by a 1 with three zeros. Okay? It's a division problem now instead of a multiplication problem. That's all that negative exponent does, is it turns it into divide by a certain power of 10 instead of multiply by a certain power of 10. When we see it like this, it's a little clearer. We're going to divide by three powers of zero. My decimal points go in three places to the left. So I'm going to need two leading zeros and then that 2.3. Okay? All right, now we're cooking. Page 240 in the green box to divide a number by a power of 10. Well, we know that. We're going to change the division to its equivalent multiplication by multiplying by the reciprocal of the divisor. Boy, these rules make it always sound so, so difficult. We know how to divide by powers of 10. This is ridiculous. We've already done this. Let's look at example two. 3.14 divided by 10, the old classic division sign. Well, we can think of that instead of calling it divide by 10, we can call it 3.14 times, uh, let's see how they do it, they, they open up parentheses, times 1 over 10, okay? Think of everything as a fraction, now it's that, which means what? It means that, simple division with a 10 in the denominator, 0.314. Okay. Part B. 0 0.48 divided by 100. Okay. If I blow it out into fractional form here, 0 0.48, call that a fraction over 1. And instead of saying divided by 100, I can say times 1 over 100. 0 0.48 over 100. Move that decimal two places to the left. 0 0.0048. Okay. Part C. 20.1 divided by 1,000. All right. Now we're cooking. Again, 20.1 over 1. Instead of divide by a thousand, that's the same thing as multiplying by one over a thousand. Okay, now you may not be writing out all these steps. Generally speaking, I'm not a fan of skipping steps, but this little step here in the middle, you know, I would maybe jump straight from here to here. Let's move that decimal four places to the left, so I need two leading zeros, and there we go. Okay, part D. 0 0.1 divided by 10 squared. Okay, so now we've got the exponent of 10 squared there. We can call that 0 0.1 um, divided by, if we want to write it that way, 100, which means 0 0.1 over 1 times 1 over 100. Okay, there's lots of different ways to show this. Okay, we could even show it as a negative exponent if we wanted. We could call that 0 0.1 times, what is that? That's 10 to the negative 2 power, right? These are all different ways to show the same thing, okay? But eventually, we'll get to, this is maybe the most familiar with this. If I take this and write it as one fraction, 0 0.1 divided by 100. That means i got to move that decimal two more places to the left. It's already on the left. Two more to the left. So 0 0.001. Okay, and finally, the last problem on example two here. 
2.5 divided by 10 to the power 3. Well, what is that saying? Well, 10 to the power 3 is 1,000, so it's 2.5 divided by 1,000. Really no reason to write it any different than that, but just to play around with our, our what we've learned here about these exponents, I could call that 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3. Same thing as dividing by 10 to the positive 3. If I multiply by 10 to the negative 3, this is the easiest one for us to visualize, I think. I'm going to divide by 3 powers of 10. That means my decimal is going 3 places to the left. So I'll have 2 leading zeros and then my 2, 5. Okay? Alright, I don't know how long this video has been, but I have concerns that the file sizes are going to get too large. So I'm going to stop it every so often and um, then just continue right on in the next video. So I know there's people that leave YouTube videos and such that are just hours and hours long, but I'm not sophisticated enough to do that here on the computer because the file sizes are going to get way too large, I think. So I'm going to stop it here and see how this looks, and then I'll make another video.